What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? I'm back with part two of my hip hop doubleheader tonight. And this is a topic that's been on my mind for a while, especially since I'm a big um, hip hop and RB fan. But uh, it seems like now, in the past four to five years, hip hop and RB, the genres are starting to fuse to get together. It's, become, it's starting to become one and the same instead of just being two separate genres of music. And don't get me wrong, because one, there's nothing wrong with exploring more than one avenue. And two, it's not like it hasn't been done before by various other artists. I'll get into that later. And um, yeah, but here's the thing. Like, it seems like now, now since now all the all these artists are starting to use the same gimmicks and all these artists are starting to sound exactly the same. Every artist, every new artist that comes out is starting to sound exactly like the last one that came out. It seems like now all the rappers want to sing and all the singers want to rap. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with exploring more than one avenue. But when, you, when you're oversaturating the market, is I mean, hip hop, it becomes boring to listen to because there's no kind of versatility. I mean, let me give you guys an example. I mean, it's like, you know, Chris Brown, you know, he wants to spit bars now. And, you know, um, other rappers, you know, they want to um, borrow and steal gimmicks from other rappers. You know, let me give you guys an example. You know, auto-tune rappers. Now, there are some artists who can do it, who can, you know, balance between hip-hop and R&B. You know, like T-Pain, he's one of the few who can do it. Drake, he's actually one of the few who can sing. And the th here's the thing. You know what's funny? The funny thing is, like, Drake was criticized for using auto-tune until he proved he could sing. As, as soon as he got criticized for using auto-tune, that's when he um, stopped using it. And he also proved that he could sing without it. And T-Pain proved on numerous occasions that he doesn't need to use auto-tune. Now, um, there are certain artists who could learn from this, and I'm not going to say who they are, I'm not going to mention any names. <coughs> Yeah, you guys get the picture. You guys see where I'm coming from. Like I said, Chris Brown, he went from making songs about Excuse Me Miss to These Hoes Ain't Loyal. And Future, he can't decide whether he wants to be an R&B singer because he was making R&B and love songs first when he came out. He wants to go from being an R&B singer to being a trap rapper. And then flop from being a flop back, flip off from being a trap rapper to being an R&B singer. And like I said, like, there's nothing wrong with doing both, but... When you're when all of it starts to sound exactly the same, and then when you got other artists co artists copying you, that's when it starts to get boring to listen to because it's no longer original. And like I said, like there's I mean Drake is not the first one to do this. Future is not the first one to do this. T Pain is not the first one to do this. I mean like look at all the artists back you know you know from way back when. I mean in in the, in the 80s we had LL Cool J. He was making songs for the ladies too, but he also proved that he could spit bars. And even in the early to mid 90s, you know, we had Bone Thugs. Bone Thugs, they pretty much revolutionized the harmony sound. You know, they actually can spit bars, you know, make stuff for the hardcore hip hop fans and make stuff for, you know, R&B that everybody can listen to. And even in the early and mid 2000s, you know, we had, you know, Nelly and we had Ja Rule. Of course, you know, well, Nelly, he's a pop artist, but you know, he makes songs for everybody. And that's another thing, you know, you can even say the same thing about Drake too. Even though, like, um, what I said in my in my last video about um, Drake versus Eminem, something I forgot to mention is that Drake, he's for general audiences. Drake's music, he literally does have something for everybody. If you want something for the hardcore hip hop heads, he's got it. If you want something for the R&B heads and the ladies, he's got it. If you want to reach kids, He's got it. If you want to reach the teenage audience, he's got it. And there's very few artists that, that there's very few artists today that has that kind of versatility, which is kind of why you can't really hate on Drake. And a lot of people, have, you know, have tried to, you know, copy that style, and it's not really that many today who can do it. But um, oh, but, oh yeah, and um, another one, um, Flow Rider. Flow Rider, he's an artist that kind of. He kind of rise the line of hip hop and R&B, but he has a working formula, and you know what he does is working. If you want a club banger, Flo Rida, he's got that on lock. And also T Pain, T Pain's probably one of my favorites from this generation, probably from about 2004 to now. That's why you can't really put him in a category with a lot of these rappers. You can't say man T Pain sucks because he doesn't rap like DMX. He doesn't rap like 50 Cent. He doesn't rap like Eminem. You can't put him in the same category because he's not that kind of artist. He's not that kind of rapper. There's rappers, there's lyricists, and then there's hip hop artists. People need to separate the genres because this is, and I, I, you know, I'm guilty of this because 
I abnormally have shit on trap rap music for so long that I forget that it's not real hip hop. You know, hip hop and trap rap are two different kinds of music, which is why you can't compare um, Gucci Mane and Waka Flocka to artists like Joe Budden and Royce the Five Nine. You can't compare Nas to um, Future or something like that. You can't do that because it's two different genres of music. All I'm saying is, like, I mean, like I said, there's nothing wrong with exploring different avenues. All I'm just saying is, you know, that certain rappers, you know, they need to find the working formula and stay in the lane. And not just mainstream artists, but for everybody who's an aspiring artist or everybody who's, you know, in the hip-hop business, you know, take that as a lesson, too. It, there's nothing wrong with borrowing from everybody, but don't borrow to the point where you're biting from somebody. <coughs> Designer. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's it for my hip-hop doubleheader tonight. You guys tell me what you think. Like, should hip-hop and R&B stay two separate genres, or do you think it's comfortable to, for them to be fused together and stay one of the same? Anyway, I'm out, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back soon with another video. Peace.